Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. It's two o'clock and time to get started. Joining us for today's briefing are Milwaukee County Executive David Crowley, Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett, Dr. Ben Weston, Associate Professor at the Medical College of Wisconsin and Director of Medical Services for the Milwaukee County Office of Emergency Management, Marlena Jackson, Interim Commissioner of the Milwaukee Health Department, Ruthie Weatherly, President, City of Milwaukee Board of Health, and Erica Sinclair, Vice President, City of Milwaukee Board of Health. County Executive Crowley, you're starting us off today. Thank you so much, Sydney, and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so today I wanna to start off talking about uh, the update related to the 2020 election. So yesterday, our Milwaukee County Election Commission submitted the results of its canvas of the 2020 election to the Wisconsin Election Commission. I wanna first and foremost say thank you to all the poll workers, volunteers, and those at the Milwaukee Election Commission for all that they do, especially in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, these folks literally worked tirelessly to ensure that voting in Milwaukee County was not only safe, but fair and accessible for everyone. And the results really showed through this canvas that the tallies for both presidential candidates uh, only changed by the number of provisional ballots received for each candidate. So that was 19 for, for Biden and two for Trump. And so now it's up to the Milwaukee, uh, excuse me, Wisconsin Election Commission to certify the results of the general election, which I believe will be done on December 1st. Uh, but also later today, the City of Milwaukee Health Department, as well as our Milwaukee County Office on African American Affairs and the Medical College of Wisconsin are hosting a virtual panel and discussion on the impacts of COVID in our community. And this event will be taking place on Zoom uh, from 4.30 to 6 p.m. And we'll focus on what we can do to move forward in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so you can follow the Creative Health Collective on Facebook to join this afternoon's discussion. And as COVID-19 cases continue to rise here in Milwaukee County, we need to really focus on uh, how we keep ourselves and our community safe and healthy. Because of the risk of spreading COVID-19, we know that attending large gatherings and events is not safe. In fact, at this point, what we, what we know is that there's really no such thing as a COVID-19 risk-free gathering with any number of people outside of your household. And so this includes small gatherings, family dinners, or events with just you know, your, your parents, your siblings, and your loved ones and in-laws. And so later today, uh, during this briefing, we'll hear from two members of the Milwaukee Board of Health about ways to be safer as we think differently about our uh, family gatherings, especially with Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up. And one of those board members, uh, members of the uh, health members, board health members, excuse me, uh, Ruth Weatherby, has been consulting uh, the Milwaukee County reopening plan. I just wanna say thank you to her for her leadership and guidance. And I wanna recognize that, you know, foregoing these events is a sacrifice for all of us. Uh, but let us remember that these sacrifices will not last forever. So let's make sure that we continue to wear our masks, uh, wash our hands and, wash our, and watch our distance and avoid gatherings, both large and small, so we can get back to doing what we love most. And that's being with our loved ones. Uh, but also, as we start planning for the holidays, I want to inform folks uh, about a few closures at the Milwaukee County Zoo. And in the zoo's continuous uh, effort to keep visitors and staff safe, and as an additional cost-saving measure, the zoo will be closed on Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, as well as New Year's Day. Uh, but there are still plenty of chances to visit the zoo this year. The zoo is open daily from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., and for more information on hours, closures, and events, please visit uh, MilwaukeeZoo.org. Uh, but also on Friday, I'll help to open the Winter Wonders drive-through holiday lights display at, the, at Whitnall Park. And so this is a safe way to enjoy holiday lights as a family and get into the holiday spirit. And so if, for more information on tickets, it is available at WinterWonders.org. And with that, I'd like to pass it on to Mayor Barrett. Thank you very much, Mr. County Executive, and thank you for all your work on, on these issues. Um, I think one of the things that we're all heartened by is the uh, recent news that pharmaceutical companies are moving towards a vaccination for COVID-19. And to have two tests now that show over 90% of the people have benefited from a vaccine, I think is the first real ray of hope that we've had in a long time. Um, but we shouldn't kid ourselves. Uh, the, the expectations are still that that would not be months before that would be available for the public in, in huge numbers. And so this is the opportunity, I think, for us um, to really double down or even triple down so that we don't have more people getting sick and dying 
between now and the distribution of the vaccination. So what does that mean? We, we know that we're seeing the numbers climb for the hospitals. We know that we're seeing the deaths climb. Um, and now for the first time, for example, we see uh, Children's Hospital announcing that it is going to accept um, adult patients. We're seeing other hospital systems announcing that they are delaying or postponing a number of elective surgeries. And that should be a clear sign to everyone that this issue is getting more serious. We know that the numbers have climbed dramatically. Um, we know that the death rate has gone up. The death rate, I believe, is still lower than it was early, earlier in the year um, because medical experts and medical providers have found ways to deal with this to some extent. But we continue to know that the death rate is high, particularly for older Americans. Um, and even for younger Americans, we have seen those tragic stories of someone losing their father or their mother or their spouse to this horrible disease. And so this is not the time to take your foot off the accelerator. This is the time to actually do more. And as the county executive said, um, to be very mindful of the size of your gatherings. We've said this over and over again. So much of this is counterintuitive because you believe, all of us believe, and all of us wanna believe that when we're with the people that we love or the people we're closest to, we're safest. That is certainly not the case. And that is definitely not going to be the case with Thanksgiving only nine days away. Many families, including my own, that have traditionally planned big Thanksgiving dinners um, are now being forced to change their plans. I believe that that is responsible. I think that that is gonna lead to greater uh, and healthier outcomes, um, but it's something that we all have to take very, very seriously. We know that the numbers again continue to climb. Then I just wanna take a couple minutes to talk about the community testing to give you an update there. So you have an understanding of just how many people continue to be out there getting tested. Um, these are the numbers for Monday, November 16th. At Miller Park, we had 2,562, 2,562 individuals um, that were tested. Again, we continue to see lines because people want to get tested. Um, we're seeing lines also at the Northwest Health Center where 630 people were tested and on the Southside Health Center where 569 people were tested. So in one day, just in these three spots in the city of Milwaukee, we had 3,761 individuals who were tested. Um, that's a good thing, uh, particularly and specifically if you're showing symptoms. If you are showing symptoms, um, please make sure that you get tested. Um, I don't think it's necessary, and medical experts don't think it's necessary if you just feel like getting tested. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about, well, I, I think I should get a test. If you're not showing any symptoms, if you've had no exposure, let's allow those individuals who are having symptoms or who are exposed to this disease be the ones that get tested first. Um, so what we're trying to do at the same time is to provide more testing in schedules that will um, work into the schedules of working people in our community. Um, and we know that there's been a community desire for weekend testing. And so I'm pleased to share that Miller Park will now be offering testing on Saturday, beginning this week, November 21st. Testing will take place between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And I think as some people found out awkwardly over the past weekend, um, we couldn't start it last weekend because I think there was a cookbook distribution that was going on in Miller Park parking lot. Um, and I think there were actually some people who probably came for COVID testing that ended up maybe getting a cookbook. Um, so at least they got something out of it. But now this Saturday, we're gonna be able to use it for the testing. And I think that that is good because we hope that this added day will alleviate the high demand for testing we've been seeing on Mondays and provide the opportunity to get tested to, for those who do not have time during the week due to work conflicts or childcare conflicts. Um, so that's important. I wanna take a, a minute and talk about inspector safety. And this is a very, very important issue. We had an incident that occurred this Saturday at Sir Paul. Um, Friday, our health staff, health department staff and, and Commissioner Jackson will talk about this more in depth, um, but talked to, to the operators of Sir Paul about what was going to be required for Saturday for the rally that was planned for Saturday. In fact, I would go a step further to say that they bent over backwards to try to accommodate this for, for the rally on Saturday. However, when the inspectors arrived on Saturday, they found lots of problems. 
lots of problems. And they were accosted, certainly verbally, um, and, and reports are that there was perhaps some jostling that went on along with that. Um, but they were certainly verbally assaulted um, and perhaps physically mistreated as well. I have not seen the final reports or their statements on it, um, but that is certainly what the reports have been. We do not tolerate that. These are individuals who are out there trying to preserve the health and safety of our residents. And to have individuals, other individuals, who accost them, whether it's verbally or physically, is not acceptable. And so we have been working with the police department and we will be partnering with the police department and the Milwaukee Health Department to ensure the safety of our employees. That is a prime concern of mine, the safety of our employees. No one can expect our employees who are there to serve the public to put themselves in harm's way because someone has an ax to grind about wearing a mask or social distancing. That is not acceptable. It's not acceptable for businesses to tolerate that or to turn a blind eye or not to be there to monitor their premises when they're allowing people to be on the premises. So again, the Milwaukee Police Department will now be partnering with the Milwaukee Health Department to ensure the safety of our employees. And with that, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Barrett. Up next, we have Dr. Ben Weston from the Medical College of Wisconsin and the Office of Emergency Management. Thanks, Sydney. Good afternoon. Uh, first to our numbers, we've had 57,104 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in our community and 584 individuals who've died. Unfortunately, over the last week, we have seen statewide new records for new daily cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. Uh, in Milwaukee County, we're seeing similar trends. Last week, we saw a grim benchmark in the county with 11 COVID deaths in a single day. That's the highest that we've seen yet in the pandemic. In positive news, there was uh, another vaccine that demonstrated high efficacy in large trials. This is great news. Uh, and the fact that the vaccine trials are continuing and safety precautions are being followed is very promising. That not only will we have a, a safe vaccine, but we should have a vaccine that everyone can feel comfortable receiving in time. There was a survey out of Ohio State University, and it showed that about 40% of people plan to have Thanksgiving dinner with over 10 people. So that's two in five individuals plan to do that. It's hard to overstate how dangerous that could be. Surely we'd all love to have Thanksgiving with our families this year uh, and gather in large groups as we're all used to doing. Uh, I personally would love nothing more than to get together with my family. I, I miss my family. With the isolation that we have all experienced over the last eight months, there'd be nothing better than to get together like everything's normal, like there's not a pandemic claiming over a thousand lives per day in the United States. But that's just not the reality in which we're living. Surely for many of us, there'll be pressure from family, from friends to, to get together. But staying home, passing on a group Thanksgiving, uh, I think we have to shift our perspective. We have to look at this as an act of love, an act of love to your family. Uh, no one who sits around that Thanksgiving table is expendable. Uh, an act of love for your community to slow the deaths that we are seeing reach record levels. And an act of love for our healthcare workers. Our hospitals, our doctors, our nurses are struggling and they cannot sustain the trends that we are seeing. So please take this holiday season as a pass. It won't be the same. It can be virtual, it can be small with those in your household. It can still be special uh, and it can be memorable, but it cannot be with people outside of your household. It cannot be the impetus for an even worse spike than we're already experiencing. As I said, a vaccine is on the way, an end is in sight, and certainly we can celebrate that. But we have to get through the next few months. And for those who haven't, now is the time to buckle down. Now is the time to change our attitude. And now is the time for those two people out of every five to think ahead and change their plans for next week. Thank you and stay safe. And I'll hand it to Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Dr. Weston. So first, I want to just um, reiterate the um, information regarding the testing sites. 
So as the mayor shared, um, first and foremost, the Miller Park site will begin at Saturday hours this coming Saturday, um, November 21st, and those hours will be from 9 until 3 p.m. Um, again, that is free, <clears throat> free, no appointment testing. And would also want to reiterate the individuals that we are looking to have themselves, um, to have them prioritize themselves um, in regards to getting testing. So um, individuals who are symptomatic and who have been exposed to someone who have COVID-19 are the individuals that should be first and foremost um, getting tested, whether that's at our free community sites or again, other testing locations in the city. The general rule for being tested after an exposure is three to five days um, after you've been exposed to someone with COVID-19 um, is <clears throat> the most appropriate time. However, we know that individuals can test positive up to 14 days after exposure, which is why quarantine is um, still necessary. So um, with that information, I do want to just um, um, share some information regarding the incidents that happened at CERB Hall this past weekend. So first I wanna make it clear that all of the work that the health department has done um, since the beginning of this pandemic has been <clears throat> to focus on protecting people from harm, protecting people from death. And to address those situations where we knowingly or people knowingly and unknowingly spread disease. Our increased enforcement and our increased order restrictions have been based on the increased disease burden. It has not been based on any individual, any individual group. It is based on our disease burden and our um, positive case numbers. So on Saturday, that is why our inspectors were out visiting restaurants and bars to ensure compliance with our city health, public health orders. And we prioritize locations where complaints have been registered with the health department. Um, it's the complaint, the complaint that we received for um, Serve Hall, we received on Friday, um, the day before the event. And so on Friday, um, we worked with Serve Hall management to finalize the rules and expectations for Saturday's event. We were very clear that masks, social distancing, crowd size, and seating were all required um, to be a part of CERB Hall's compliance. And that is consistent with the requirements for all other approved plans that have been reviewed by the city health department. So when our inspectors got there on Saturday, um, it was immediately clear that the requirements that had been discussed the day before were not being followed. Additionally, um, as the inspectors attempted to document the violations, they were pushed and harassed, um, including some very offensive verbal language to, to the inspectors. Um, at that point, the inspectors went to find the manager, the Serb Hall manager, um, who wasn't outside at the time. So they did have to enter the building. Um, when they did talk to him about the violations, he then chose to address the crowd, the crowd excuse me, and shut down the event. Um, one important point I want to make is um, that in this case and in all of our enforcement activities um, and all of the other violations that have happened, um, we are focused on location, venue, uh, what is appropriate per the venue for size, for capacity limits, for seating. Accusations have been made in the last uh, couple days um, regarding the health department that we targeted Saturday's event because of political positions of the sponsors or the participants. And that is absolutely not true. Uh, we're working hard to protect public health and to make our efforts, <clears throat> excuse me, and all of our efforts um, take place without bias of any religion, race, or political belief. And lastly, I wanna just share um, loud and proud that I am extremely, extremely proud and impressed with our health department employees. They have done an outstanding job throughout this entire pandemic. They have been dedicated. They have worked tirelessly to make sure that we are keeping our public safe. I am absolutely appalled when I hear that our inspectors are met with abuse, I am disheartened when I hear that our inspectors receive death threats for doing the work that they um, feel they're committed to do to serve our public. 
And I would just like to say that they deserve all of our appreciation and respect. The work is not easy. It is difficult and it is long. And for them to put their selves and their lives in danger to do their jobs, as the mayor shared, is not acceptable. So as he also shared, we are thankful that we are working with the Milwaukee Health Department to make sure that moving forward, we have um, a good plan in place to ensure their safety. That is our number one priority, and we will keep that at the forefront. So with that, I will turn it over to the Board of Health. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ruthie Weatherly and I'm a public health consultant. I have the privilege of serving as the Milwaukee County Board of Health President. As a member of the board, I have seen the incredible impact that COVID-19 has had on health departments, healthcare systems, employers, community members, parents, and students. Right now, with the infection rates that we have locally and across Wisconsin, the burden of COVID-19 the burden that COVID-19 has placed on the healthcare system is far too high. The plain truth is that the risk that we are facing is that there will not be enough staff or supplies to provide appropriate care to those suffering with COVID-19. When folks stay home as much as possible, this means avoiding any activity that is not essential or outside of work, they have less contact with people. When they have less contact with people, they are less likely to come across disease. When they are less likely to come across disease, they need less testing, care, and services. When there are fewer people infected, hospitals, nurses, healthcare staff, and other critical infrastructure workers can get a bit of a break. And believe me, they need a little bit of a break. Kids can go back to school more safely when everyone pitches in to bring disease down in their community. This is sacrifice. Sacrifice to help the most vulnerable in the community, the ones that depend on you to keep them healthy. You see where I'm going with this, especially this time of year. Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, New Year's Eve have to look different this year, more than any other year. There will be a time in the future to have large gatherings to celebrate your chosen holiday, but this is not the year. Gathering with members outside of your family that you do not live with is an enormous risk. A risk that none of us can afford to take. A risk that could be fatal for you or someone that you love, like, or just tolerate. Doctors are preparing for and planning on an unprecedented surge in COVID-19 cases after Thanksgiving. But this doesn't have to be the way. We can all choose to stay home because it is the right thing to do. You can still make your favorite foods, continue some traditions or start some new ones. Go ahead and have the third or fourth helping of mashed potatoes, but please do it within the safety of your own home with only people that you live with. There are 247,000 Americans, including 2,649 of uh, Wisconsinites that will not be able to give thanks or celebrate this 2020 holiday season. Please do not gather in large groups so that does, that number does not continue to rise. We are at a critical moment in time when your cho choice to stay home and celebrate this holiday season with only members of your immediate household can literally mean the difference between life and death. Thank you. Hi, my name is Erica Sinclair, and I am the Vice President of the Milwaukee Board of Health, I'm serving along with Ruthie. And I too am very proud of the health department's, um, the staff, they have done an awesome job as a board member um, and as a, as a practitioner in, in public health and in healthcare as a CEO of Health Connections Incorporated, um, a medical clinic that works with vulnerable populations. I've had many, many interactions with um, the health department staff even just a few minutes before I got on this call. And the interactions have been phenomenally dedicated, committed, um, motivated to take care of the community as they are um, our tasked with doing. And I appreciate the, the care that they take. And I do um, support any uh, works that are happening to make sure that the community stays safe, of course. Um, as a community partner um, with the Milwaukee Health Department, as well as the county, as well as the state, 
um, our clinic has been providing community-based um, and on-site COVID testing. Um, again, we deal with the pri primarily with vulnerable populations that don't normally receive health care in the traditional manners. And so we take it to them um, through food pantries and such. Um, and so with that said, we've been testing about 200 people a day, um, primarily over here in the North Shore area. And our goal is to help fill gaps and be partners with public health, again, at the city, state, and county levels. Um, I also call people back with positive test results. And um, in fact, today I called a family and now they have to make very different decisions because part, part of their, their household are positive and other parts are negative. And with that said, they have to figure out how do they do holidays? How do we do you know, school and work and everything else? And the, the mother and father just made a decision that everybody stays home, everybody quarantines. And they did it in a way where they made it fun. They're like, we just have to be family. Like we are anyways, we have to just be together um, in a different way this year. And that's mainly because we want to see grandma next year. And so I think that's a great example of how we're going to have to move forward um, this year and, um, and do social distancing, washing your hands, wearing masks, and so that we can make sure that we take care of ourselves, um, of each other, of our families, of our community. Um, and if we take these precautions now, then we can go back to having um, the wonderful Wisconsin springs and summers and falls that we have. Um, it's one reason why many of us are still in Wisconsin is because we enjoy our outdoors um, and we enjoy our gatherings, but we can't enjoy them this year and to, into next year unless we take care of each other right now and take the precautions that we haven't spoken of at this point in time. So again, I, I appreciate um, everything that the Board of Health and the City of Milwaukee and the county are doing in efforts to get the information out but now it's, it's up to each citizen and resident of Milwaukee and beyond to take personal responsibility to make sure that you keep all of us safe. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and social distance. Thank you. Thank you. We are waiting for our first question from media. Please enter your questions into the chat. Hi, can I ask a question in person? For the health commissioner? Sure, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is, you guys talked about partnering with MPD to ensure the safety of city health inspectors. What plans are going to be in place to make sure that city health inspectors are safe when they're on the job? Yeah, so thanks for the question. Um, as, as I shared, obviously, this is a top priority, not only for the mayor, but obviously for myself as the interim health commissioner. So we are working with uh, the Milwaukee Police Department to have um, escorts at every single um, inspection that we do moving forward. Um, and so we are just working out the plans and the schedules of that right now. Um, Milwaukee Pul um, Police Department has come um, to the table willing to assist us in help helping us um, understanding the severity of the um, situation, but also understanding the necessity of the work. Okay. And the, the death threats are, have they been, is there a paper trail of them? Did they really start after the Serb Hall incident? Right, so we're still um, finalizing all of the details around that investigation, but it was after the um, Serb Hall incident that we received communications. Okay, will you be providing us with what those death, were they messages, you know, were they Facebook messages, emails, how did they receive the death threats? So the communications came in through our city of Milwaukee um, complaint process through the city website. And um, obviously that information um, and those investigations, like I said, are continuing. Um, and we are working with our IT team to see if how um, we can identify individuals. And so we're working on that. Okay. So from now on, city health inspectors will have police escorts with them at every visit. Yes, Thank that you. is the plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our next question comes from Sean Kirkby at Wisconsin Health News for Commissioner Jackson and Mayor Barrett. Dane County issued a new order today barring indoor public gatherings and limiting outdoor gatherings to 10 people or less. Is Milwaukee going to move to, toward those limitations? Why or why not? Well, I can tell you, we continue to monitor the situation and obviously listen to the um, 
the advice we get not only from the health commissioner, but from Dr. Weston and others. Um, and so we are continuing to evaluate that. We'll be in fact meeting later today to discuss what measures are necessary. That doesn't mean that there's gonna be a decision today, but as we see these numbers continue to climb, um, nothing is off the table. So we're gonna to continue to evaluate. And I would share, um, so as a health department, again, we review our numbers weekly to address the actual order, um, but we are looking at our numbers daily. And so um, we'll continue to do that. And I, I do applaud Dade County for their work and their efforts in that um, specifically to the order. Our next question comes from Ashley Sears at Fox 6 News. Was the Serb Hall incident the first time the inspectors were met with abuse? Will Milwaukee Police Department be joining the health department on each inspection? And how much will Sir Paul be fined for Saturday's violations? So um, the um, citation amount um, and the actual citations are still in process of, um, of moving forward. So that is um, still um, in process. In regards to this being the first um, time that our inspectors were abused, um, our, the answer to that is no. Um, throughout this process, um, our inspectors have been verbally abused. They have um, definitely had to have some very difficult conversations and those conversations have not been um, happy. They have not been met with welcoming arms at different times. Um, but again, what I can say is that our inspectors are very committed to the work that they're doing specific to um, this pandemic as well as other work in the health department. Um, and then the other question regarding um, MPD joining. So again, that is the plan. We have began those conversations. So the plan is for um, there to be um, Milwaukee Police Department escorts with every inspection. And, and I wanna add, obviously the events Saturday were very, very disheartening and discouraging and angering. Um, but that was also the time when we received the death threat and, and to have our city of Milwaukee health department employees receive a death threat totally crosses the line, totally crosses the line, um, and is one of the other reasons that we're taking action like we're taking with the police department. Our next question comes from Emily Files at WUWM. The City of Racine Health Department has ordered schools to close during the holidays. The Milwaukee Teachers Union is calling on the Milwaukee Health Department to do the same. Does MHD plan to implement any new orders or restrictions pertaining to schools? Why or why not? Again, um, so the um, tighter restrictions um, in regards to the order, when as we make those decisions, we will make sure to share them. And again, those decisions are being made um, weekly as we have our discussions, as we talk to our teams. And so we will share that information as soon as those decisions are made. Our next question comes from Mary Jo Ola at TMJ4. What can you tell us about the city of Milwaukee and the county of Milwaukee's plan for vaccine distribution? Um, I can let you all know that the uh, Milwaukee Health Department has started our operations planning around vaccine orders. And um, we're very early in the process of that planning, but we are um, confident that um, the work that's already been done in response to the pandemic has set us up very well to be able to respond as we need to um, as the vaccine um, becomes readily available to the public. And I think it's important to note that um, the vaccine will be available in phases and um, those different phases might be appropriate for different settings and different um, distributors, meaning hospitals or healthcare settings versus a public health setting. So we're continuing to work through um, as a health department where we fall into that work um, and we'll be ready once the, um, once the vaccine is ready to go, we'll be ready to go. Our next question comes from Sharon Bagenda at CBS 58. After this Saturday's incident, moving forward, will the city change their order in regards to event space capacity? So I can share that, um, again, as we look at our orders, capacity is something that we are always looking at. And so it is one of the opportunities we have to decrease the size limits um, of gathering. So that is something, yes, that we would be considering. The next question comes from Sari Lusk at the Milwaukee Business Journal. The National Restaurant Association says the restaurant industry is being treated as, quote unquote, a scapegoat for COVID-19 spreading. Based on contact tracing, how do you respond? Second question is one of the Milwaukee businesses that was recently that recently faced enforcement action was cited for hookah usage. 
This is not listed in the order as a prohibited activity. Which part of the order does this violate? Let, let me take the first one, if I may. Um, I can tell you locally, uh, some of our most responsible uh, restaurateurs have been our most vocal supporters for having our plan in place to allow restaurants to open in a safe manner. They, they recognize that they have a responsibility um, as businesses to provide a safe setting. And I think that they are extremely appreciative um, of the efforts that the city is making to allow them to continue to employ people and to serve people in a safe fashion. So um, I don't know what the National Restaurant Association is talking about when it talks about making restaurants um, a scapegoat because here we've had a very strong partnership. But as I've said repeatedly, it's those restaurants and bar owners that don't follow the rules that could ruin it for everybody. So we like working with responsible restaurateurs um, and we wanna make sure that, that they can continue to operate in a safe fashion. But the danger really comes from those restaurateurs and bar owners who don't act responsibly and they can be the ones that could ultimately ruin it for everybody. So, um, in regards to the, the second question um, for, for regarding hookah usage, so our, um, the enforcement that happens when our inspectors goes out is specific to the order, which means it would be social distancing, mask wearing, um, at currently seating, and then capacity. So it would have been one of those four violations specific um, if, it was the, if a violation was there for, um, for the moving Milwaukee forward safely order. Our next question comes from Jeremy Janine at Urban Milwaukee. For Commissioner Jackson, what is the size of the inspection staff now and do inspections occur after 10 p.m.? So we are um, continuing to evaluate our, our current enforcement staff. Obviously, um, as you can imagine, um, our staff are um, upset by what has happened. And uh, again, but they remain committed, um, which is just, it's astounding to me again, it makes me proud to work with them. So we will continue our enforcement efforts. Um, additionally, um, as it relates to going out after 10 o'clock. So as of two weeks ago, when we actually started to beef up the enforcement, our teams were going out later. So they will go out um, as late as they need to based off of the complaints that they get. If there are any further questions, please place them into the chat. That appears to be the end of our questions for today. Thanks everyone for joining us and we will see you back here on Thursday. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you.